Given the number of human beings with internet on the face of the earth, and the number of watch hours are racked up by gaming YouTube channels, it's probably safe to say that a lot of people really like watching gaming videos on YouTube. And if you're in my audience, well, you probably do because you got recommended this video. And I love gaming videos on YouTube as well. That's kind of why I run my own small channel here. But I can't help but get this bad feeling in my gut that's sort of increased over the past six months, but really over the past two, as I've started to upload to this channel a bit more and more and kind of try and take YouTube a little bit more seriously from an analytics perspective. One thing that I've discovered as I've done YouTube more and more is that the way videos take off, especially for smaller creators, but also for reasonably large channels, is that they have to be piggybacked off videos by very successful channels where the person has essentially become an influencer. Now, there's nothing wrong with gaming influencers, otherwise I wouldn't spend so much of my life watching them. But in this video, I want to address something that I think in this situation that's becoming progressively more toxic and is probably going to end up damaging both creators' abilities to make good games, but also just our enjoyment of those games. And in order to illustrate this very sophisticated conceptual analysis that I'm going to provide to you today, I have ignored my usual Photoshop usage and gone with something far more sophisticated, MS Paint. So, the way I see the YouTube cycle at the moment, and the YouTube algorithm seems to agree with me, is that we start with a new shiny thing coming out. So there's something that people are interested in, and we'll create content based on that for, you know, the foreseeable future until it comes out, let's say three to six months. And the YouTube algorithm is aware of this because it has the metadata for both the script voicing over the footage, but it also has the metadata of the footage itself, and it can tell that this is a commentary on a trailer for a new upcoming game, let's say Starfield. Then we arrive at phase two. Is it shiny? This is the top. This is the peak era. This is where I got, what, half my subscribers on this channel in one day making a video on Diablo uh, 4. This is where the majority of engagement comes from. And people ask, is it shiny? Is a game good? And some people say yes, and some people say no, and then things explode, and streamers react, and this is the, this, the, this is the arc of the content cycle. And then we go on the downslope. We start getting, should I play shiny? Is it really worth to play shiny? Is in-game shiny in this game? I don't know, maybe. And then we go down to the bottom of the content hill. This is where content and engagement dies off for a game. People go, hmm, maybe. And here you have your actual YouTubers. Ah, that's a bit harsh. Here you have YouTubers that actually play the game and give you insightful advice into the game. This is the hmm, maybe. The people that actually dig deep into that particular game. And they're not transient YouTubers that just jump from game to game to game to game to game. And that's, that's the cycle of YouTube vis-a-vis uh, -vis gaming. As a result, you basically have two kinds of gaming channels. You have gaming channels that are heavily, heavily niched down into a particular type of game, or nowadays really needs to be a singular game, or you have YouTube channels that are constantly chasing whatever the YouTuber finds interesting, or more likely if they're being a bit serious, whatever the algorithm seems to be really, really pushing at the moment. But I think this really has two big issues that are kind of harming gaming at the moment. The first is that people don't really rely on their own experiences of games anymore. They rely on influencers more than they actually rely on having played the game. For example, I got a lot of harsh criticism for my opinions on Baldur's Gate 3, which I just don't think is all that great a game. So sue me. But one of the things that struck me as I've played through the game, I'm almost done now. I, th I think I, I'm into Act 3. I don't know how much extra content there's going to be, but I, I'm, I feel I'm nearing the end. And one of the things that struck me as I've played through Baldur's Gate 3 is that most people still haven't gotten out of the first act. Now, I understand people have time constraints and stuff, but the game's been out, you know, a while now. And most people still haven't gotten out of the first act, and yet, Yet, they feel comfortable telling me that I don't know anything about the game, even though I have played it much longer than they have. And 
I think there's an aspect of this that, to be fair to them, is, you know, the time constraints. But there's also just another aspect that people relate to gaming now in a parasocial way. They don't really play the games as much as they used to. They watch a lot of YouTube videos on the games, and when they see one video that disagrees with all the other videos, they definitely click it, which is why that video has insane retention and click-through rate. And then they tell you you're wrong. And that's it. And, I mean, from a YouTuber's perspective, that isn't all that bad. But from a gamer's perspective, it's kind of awful because, well, people aren't actually enjoying the hobby anymore. They're relying more on the parasociality of gaming rather than actually having fun. And I also think this risks spilling into causing game developers to have a terrible time if they make one mistake, everything will blow up on social media, their lives will be destroyed, etc., etc., because we're not really judging games anymore. We're all involved in this parasocial game. My partner is a big fan of YouTube drama channels, which I don't really think I am. But one of the things that she always remarks at is, why are you watching a drama channel? And then I say, I'm not. I'm watching a gaming channel. But the two have begun to blur as social media and parasocial relationships are just changing the way we do things. The other aspect to this that I think is negative is it tends to harm YouTubers that are actually in a reasonably narrow space. If I make videos narrow to the CRPG space, but I don't happen to like Baldur's Gate 3, well, the only way for me to get views is really to talk about Baldur's Gate 3 right now, even though I don't like it, because, well, that's the thing that's trending. If I were to post a video I've been working on for about six months now, which is an extensive review of Icewind Dale, it'd probably get about 50 views because no one cares about Icewind Dale right now. People care about Baldur's Gate 3 right now, and in a month or two or three months, they'll have moved on to the next shiny object. The time I noticed this most extremely was during the huge hype surrounding Final Fantasy XIV, when everyone's favorite influencer was playing through the storyline of Final Fantasy XIV. Now, Final Fantasy XIV is an amazing game. Or, I mean, it wasn't at launch. When I played it at launch, it was one of the worst MMORPGs I'd ever played. But Final Fantasy XIV is an amazing game. But did Final Fantasy XIV really benefit from all the influencer hype? Sure, they, they might have gotten a few new subscribers, and the community was exposed to a wider audience, and you might say that's good. But how many people that enjoyed watching streams or commentary or drama surrounding WoW versus Final Fantasy XIV actually sat down and enjoyed Final Fantasy XIV for the good game that it is? I'm all for influencers popularizing games, but at a certain point, again, the parasocial level is detracting from the way people actually think about and experience gaming. I came up with this video largely because I've been watching people sit rather anxiously on their seats as we all await the release of Starfield, which I haven't bought yet. I'm going to see how the reviews come out. But the reality is people are sitting on the edge of their seats waiting to totally trash the game or totally praise the game. The day of its re release or a few days after, gaming will be spammed with either Starfield, best game ever, or Starfield, the end of Bethesda, collapse of reality. And uh, I might be along with them. But that's just the cycle of content production now. There's a YouTube channel that I used to watch a lot back in the old days of YouTube. And the creator on that channel had around 3,000 to 4,000 subs, which was actually a lot back then. And he had some health issues. And he then retired from YouTube for quite some years. I would think like four to five years. He came back to YouTube once the algorithm had changed and continued to just post videos on CRPGs. And he went from having around two or 3,000 views per video, which was pretty good back then, to having around 10. That's just the reality of YouTube now. The space has changed. But I think that makes it more important than ever to actually focus on the gaming in gaming. And hopefully, Starfield is fun enough to make it an enjoyable experience without any parasocial drama. If you've watched this far into the video, thank you, and uh, please give me a like and subscribe. Uh, it really helps, and uh, I promise to spend it on coffee or beer.